A theme is a collection of fonts, colors, and effects that can be applied to the entire workbook in a single click. That means if you want to be able to have like your headings, the labels for your columns and your rows, to be in one type of font, but yet different enough to distinguish between the body of the database. So you can say, okay, those are actually labels for the rows and the columns to offset it, but nothing's so contrasting that it's jarring and you can't focus on the database. Then you may want to take a look at the built-in themes that are available, but not just for fonts, but also for colors and effects. So for like your shapes, objects, charts, smart art, they'll have complementary colors and effects for those as well. So to take a look at themes to see what's available, and if you like one, to apply it to the entire workbook, come up here and click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Themes group, and there you go. You have your themes here that are made up again of colors, fonts, and effects, so to find a theme that may work for you, click on the drop-down arrow and you got quite a few. You can go ahead and scroll down and take a look at all the other thumbnails. But let me go ahead and explain the thumbnail. You have the uppercase A and lowercase A, that represents your theme fonts. So the uppercase A is for the headings, the lowercase A is for the body. So when you define your headings as, well, your labels here for the column, and then the lowercase a, the body, for the body font, then when you go ahead and hover over one of these, you can see how different they are. It'll update it and reflect it in the workbook. And then down below that, you've got your complementary colors. You have colors for that theme. You have different colors for the other themes that you can see. And also, if there's any background color that you want to update, it'll reflect that as well. So, to give you a sample here, if I hover over Ion Board, when you look over to the right at the worksheet, I want you to notice the data in the workbook and also the shape, the arrow that's pointing up. So I go over here, and are you noticing something? You can go ahead and rewind the video. When I come over here, the only thing that's updating is this database right here and the shape. How come the data over here isn't updating, or even the 8% in cell H3? The reason being is because you can actually turn off the functionality of the themes by choosing a non-theme font. And this only applies to fonts, not colors or effects. It'll always update your smart art objects, charts, if you want to choose a theme. But for the fonts, you have to choose a theme font. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and click on the Home tab, and then select a cell that has a theme font, and click on the drop-down arrow for our fonts. And notice, you got two sections. You have your theme fonts, which only contains two, the one for your headings and the rest for the body, which is the body of the database, and then you have your regular fonts. If you choose a non-theme font, just another regular font down below, like if I type in, let's just come up here, and I've got total selected, so that's a theme font. It's got Calibri Light, and that's a heading. So if I come up here and I say, no, 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 I don't want to use that. I want to use, type in a regular font, Arial, and it comes down here and I choose Arial. Then when I come back up here to the page layout, because it's not a default theme font, when I go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow to choose another theme, notice all the other labels here are updating, or the headings, but not that cell because it's a non-theme font which is interesting because if you choose something that's non-theme, it means you can't choose a theme and update it in a single click. That's out of its range. So let me go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow and choose something else like Slice. And then you'll see that when I select that cell, come up here on the Home tab, the heading is Century Gothic, and let's see if it's the same down below. It is. So I can come up here on the Page Layout, choose another theme, Celestial, and select that. Go to the Home tab, Calibri Light, down below, Calibri. So you're either going to get the same font for your headings and the body, or something that's close but different enough that you can say, okay, I think those are the labels. To me, it doesn't really look different enough. It kind of looks like it's blending. In fact, it looks a bit smaller for the labels, but still, it's different to be complementary. And if you're like, no, I don't want to work with that theme, you can come back up here on the Page Layout tab, as far as the fonts are concerned. And remember, your themes are made up of colors, fonts, and effects. So after you choose a theme, if you're like, well, I like the colors and effects, but I don't like the fonts. Then go ahead and click on the Fonts drop-down arrow and hover over to get a preview to the right-hand side for an update of those fonts. And again, you got the big A and the little a. In fact, it defines it here. The big A for your headings is going to be Arial. Then the little a is going to be for the body of the message. Now, because it's smaller, it doesn't necessarily mean that the font type is going to be smaller. It's just trying to define and show you that these are for the headings and that's for the body of the message. So that way you can choose a different type of font by scrolling down and updating it in a single click. If you don't like what you see here, you're not stuck with it. You can actually create your own custom fonts for your themes. But we'll cover that in a later training video.
well, we started it. We might as well finish it. You also have your colors. Click on the drop down arrow. If you don't like the colors of the current theme that you selected over here, but you like everything else, of course, you can choose a different color like blue green. Notice how the arrow gets updated. Now, because only you only have the arrow shape, you're not going to see the effects of all the colors, like if we had a chart, smart art, like an organization chart, things like that. But you'll see that if you go ahead, choose one of these different palettes here. You can also customize it, click off. You also have effects. So just keep your eye on the arrow pointing up as I hover over each one of these effects. And you can't customize effects. What you see here is what you get. So you have to choose one. And then after you choose all that, you can go ahead and save it and create your own custom theme. But we'll cover that in a later training video. The main focus of this training video is to learn how to apply themes. And it's really simple. Just go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and find one. And it'll update everything within the entire workbook. But it won't update any data within the workbook that isn't by default a complementary theme. So this brings up a point that when you install Excel 2016 by default, let me go to the Home tab, it's going to have your theme fonts. So when you start typing, it's already going to be in action. You can just go ahead and click on the Page Layout tab and choose the theme, and you won't have to worry about it. But if you get outside of that and say, no, I'm going to change this to a non-theme font without using themes to change the fonts, then you won't be able to have the theme updates applied to the contents of that cell. Which brings me up to another point. For me, I don't care to use theme fonts, at least not for what I do. So you can come up here, click on the File tab, go down, Backstage to Options. The General tab selected by default, and come down here, and it says use this as the default font. By default, when you install Excel, it'll be Body Font. And so that's the theme font to let Excel know that if you want to go ahead and use themes, it'll automatically update the fonts to whatever theme that you choose. But if you go outside of that, so like me, I said, look, I don't want to use body font because I don't use themes. I want every new Excel workbook that I create to be in Arial. Then I can come up here and type in Arial and choose that. Then when I create a new workbook, let me go ahead and click Cancel. All the cells will be a non-theme font. So when I go ahead and use themes and try to update, choose a theme, I can't update any of the fonts within the workbook unless, of course, as you see over here, I select a range and come up on the Home tab and say, OK, for this range, I will use a theme font. It'll be body. And for my headings here, or the labels for the database, I will use the theme font for the headings. And then I can go ahead and choose a theme. Or if I just want to work with fonts and update the fonts within the workbook to one of the theme fonts, then well, have fun. Go ahead and choose one and away you go. And you know what? It may be good to have that mix where you have some cells you can update on the fly with themes and others where you want it to be static and not updatable when somebody chooses a different theme as far as fonts are concerned. Because anything else, effects and colors, you don't get a choice to block out. They'll automatically update if you choose a theme that updates the colors or effects or you actually choose a color itself, one of the palettes there, or one of the effects. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.